Live from Quaker Steak and Lube on US 1 in Edison, this is the Chris Ash Show. Your chance to talk with the head coach of the Scarlet Knights on the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Tonight's show is brought to you by... To be a part of the show, give us a call at 1-877-384-1869. That's 877-384-1869. Now, let's go live to Quaker Steak and Lube in Edison to talk Rutgers football. Here's your host, Chris Carlin. It is regrettably our final Chris Ash show of the year, but we are here tonight at Quaker Steak and Lube, another great crowd here in Edison, New Jersey, on Route 1. If you're in the area, come on by. It is the Chris Ash show. Chris Carlin, this week in for Eric Legrand on assignment is Anthony Fusilli. Hello, Fooch. My, my assignment was to have a fabulous steak at the uh, at the restaurant. Good and, good food and good company. I'm in. And the head coach, of course, of the Scarlet Knights is Chris Ash. Coach, how are you? I'm great. Uh, you just said it was the last one. I'm disappointed about that. What are you going to do next Wednesday night? I'll, I'll be here and I'll mock one up myself. I can come over if you want. Yeah. I mean, well, well, you know what? We can share that uh, steak Fooch isn't eating tonight. <laughs> Uh, Eric, by the way, is not with us, and I, I'm going to air him out on this. He called me last night and said, listen, I just got invited to the Creed Two premiere tomorrow night. Big time. Can I go? And what am I going to tell him? No, you can't go? Big time. Oh, my Lord. Big time. And this is right. So right now, if you see a picture on page six tomorrow of Eric with uh, Michael B. Jordan, you'll know why. <laughs> Our telephone number, 877-384-1869, 877-384-1869. Rutgers getting set for their final home game of the regular season. This coming Saturday, they take on the Penn State Nittany Lions. And it, of course, is senior day. We'll talk about the 16 seniors uh, for their final game at highpoint.com stadium. Let's take a look back first, though. This past week, the loss to Michigan, 42-7 to was the final. Uh, a lot of things uh, in the first half, very positive uh, to take out of it. And, uh, Coach, when you went back and looked, uh, what were the things that you liked? What were the things that you know, bothered you uh, about the game? Well, there were a lot of things that we liked. Um, to start, I, I truly believe the score wasn't indicative of the way that we played in the game. I thought we played with great energy, um, great effort. Uh, I thought we played with toughness, especially up front on both sides of the ball. That was a very good football team we played. It's a veteran football team, a talented football team, one that's playing for a lot. And, um, you know, we could have really gone one of two directions. But our players, you know, were excited about playing that game. And, um, you yeah, know, I, I really just loved the attitude that we played with. And, uh, you know, when we didn't uh, have things go exactly our way, we didn't fold. We didn't, um, you know, give in. And uh, we kept fighting and kept playing. And you look at offensively, we ran for 193 yards in the game, one of our best performances in a long time. And uh, one of the uh, most uh, rushing yards against that defense that Michigan has uh, had. Uh, and then defensively, I thought we played really good run defense until the last long run of the game. Unfortunately, we misfit a run. And, you know, it got the totals kind of out of whack, but we had uh, held them to about 130 yards until that point. And that was one of the lowest uh, rushing uh, totals that they'd had this year. So there were a lot of things to build on, disappointing things. It really gets back down to our third down execution on both sides of the ball. You know, we've struggled in that area for whatever reason uh, on both sides of the ball. And you know, it stalled some drives and, um, you know, extended some drives for them. Uh, I really thought that there were some plays offensively that we had uh, that were designed well uh, that were, you know could have worked and we missed out on some opportunities especially early in that game to get some more things going but uh, all in all I was really pleased with our team I, I came out of the game feeling like we've continued to improve and I, I get it you know you look at the score and like how can you say that but I, I watch the tape and and uh, that's what I see that's what I feel and our players feel it too well there are a lot of numbers to back up what you said you mentioned the the rushing output and yes, you had an 80-yard run in there, but you still had another 100-plus yards rushing in addition to Isaiah Pacheco's 80-yard run. Let's talk about that, though, uh, first, because that was the longest... Two things that are important here. That was the longest play uh, for a Rutgers freshman ever, longest touchdown run, and it was the longest play allowed by a very tough Michigan defense uh, all season long this year. 
Yeah, it was a great play. One, it was a great play design. I thought the offensive staff did a great job of putting together a play that took advantage of some of uh, Michigan's alignments. And uh, it was well executed by our players and then a great finish by Isaiah. And uh, so there were a lot of things that went into it. You know, we, we need to try to do that more consistently, but uh, we need explosive plays, whether in a pass game or a run game. And uh, I think really that what the play did and, and you know, the feedback I've got, it, it shows that we have some, t- some young talent. Uh, I think it showed uh, Isaiah's talent, put that on display. And uh, Raheem Blackshear, you know, did some things in the game also that continued to display the talent and playmaking ability that he has. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm excited about those things. Chris, obviously we've seen a lot of terrific runs in our time. Ray Rice, Brian Leonard, Juwan Jamison. Talk about the young man's determination as a freshman, just his ability to – finish but not only just his mindset that, that he has as a freshman well to, to start I mean he's just tough as nails he loves the game of football he's not scared of anything he's not intimidated by anybody uh, no moments too big he, he wants the ball I mean he really has the mindset and the attitude that you want your football players to have he just loves the game and he, he can't get enough of it he, he loves to be coached he's not perfect he's got a long way to go it was, it, that's what's really exciting is he's just getting started um, and he's got so much potential, and uh, the way he loves the ball, uh, loves the game, and the way he approaches practice every day, he's going to be an outstanding player. But um, you know, he's got talent too, and, and uh, he's got all those characteristics. And you put that with some talent, he's got a chance to be a great player here. I, I tell you what was very impressive, and I didn't quite realize it as the play was happening. But you've mentioned a couple times the finish, the way he was zigzagging a little bit toward the end of the run to make sure he was going to get home. And, and not get caught, and I thought that was an incredibly instinctual play on his part. He might not have known where the end zone was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's actually, you know, his coach is here, so it was great coaching. That's true. Right? Nunzio did a great job. <laughs> Nunzio now, Campanelli we'll talk to a little bit later on in the show. But it, it was. You're, you're absolutely right. I don't mean to, to make fun of the, the, the comment, but you're absolutely right. Uh, it was. He knew uh, where he was at. He, he could feel the defenders coming. He knew what he had to do to get that extra few yards to get in the end zone. So, you know, that's a great sign for a young player. A uh, couple of other things that really stuck out. Your offensive line did not allow a sack to this Michigan team and only four tackles for loss. And they had come in. Again, talking about this Michigan defense, it was, I believe, overall fourth ranked in the country uh, and number one, uh, fourth ranked in scoring and number one in total defense. And they also only had uh, four tackles for loss. They were averaging well over six per game. I thought your offensive line really held up pretty well in some spots. They did. That's a, that's a great uh, defensive line. You're going to see a lot of those guys playing on Sunday. And yeah, I think it just it shows that there's been improvement because if we would have played that team earlier in the season probably would have been a little bit different and uh, if you look back a couple of years ago about every time we dropped back we were getting sacked you know uh, so there's been drastic improvement uh, over the last couple of years with the O-line but really this year and I thought it was one of their better games again there were some it's not great I'm not saying we're satisfied we're happy we're, we're not but uh, we saw really good signs of progress and we need to continue on that path coach I'm going to ask you about a young player who you gave an opportunity to and he's run with it, and that's uh, the pride of Pennsylvania, to Zach Vineski. I, I don't know if you knew what he would do on game day, but he has sh- surely shown up. Yeah, well, you're right. Uh, we really didn't, and, and uh, we, we always talk to, to the players about uh, always preparing yourself for that opportunity, and uh, when you get it, take advantage of it, because you, if you don't, you never know when your next one's going to come. Uh, the left guard position had been one um, in flux for the majority of the season. We tried several different guys. Some guys got hurt, and it finally fell to him. And uh, because of his consistent work ethic every single day and his attitude and in his preparation, when he got the opportunity, he took advantage of it. That first game against Northwestern, he did some really good things that nobody at the left guard position had done yet this year. Now, he wasn't perfect. He got beat on some things. He's got a lot of things he's got to clean up. But uh, we know what we're going to get from Zach every game on every rep and that that uh, means a lot and uh, he's been consistent with it and he's really working hard and focusing on the things he's got to get better at and it sounds like his teammates really have uh, been happy for his success because he's a guy to root for oh absolutely he's got a great attitude he shows up in the building every day with a smile on his face and kind of like Isaiah loves the game works hard at it does everything he's asked to do and uh, you know when those type of guys have success other people you know will, will celebrate with them our telephone number once again, 877-384-1869, 877-384-1869. If you're in attendance here at Quaker Steak and Lube, come on up. 
Get your question in for the coach. We've got the microphone set up over here. And as always, you can tweet us your questions at Rutgers Radio. That's at Rutgers Radio. Uh, defensive side coach, boy, Avery Young just really continues to, to improve week in and week out. Early in the game, had the fourth down stop uh, deep in uh, your own territory. Uh, had a couple of... Only got credited with one, but it felt like there were two or three breakups in there and nine tackles overall. Yeah, every week we could talk about his progress and you know his attitude and approach to the game. We just absolutely love Avery, and he keeps getting better and better. And you know, kind of like Isaiah, you know, there's not a moment that's too big. He's not intimidated by anybody. He just goes out there to compete and wants to be coached, and he gets better every single day. And you know, he, he gave up a couple plays in that game, but those are, again, they're good players, uh, veteran players that he's going against, but he made a lot of plays too. How about the big fella up front from uh, Orange, New Jersey, Willington Prevalon? Looks like he's getting better and better. Uh, he is. Uh, the more reps he gets and more consistent uh, position uh, play that he, that he gets, um, he improves. I really like the kid. He's big. He's strong. You know, I, I, if I remember right, when we got here, he was about 250 pounds. He's 295 pounds now, and he's strong. He looks great. Uh, he's starting to play uh, more physical and more consistent, uh, both in the run game and the pass game. So I'm really excited about him. Uh, one or two last ones, Josh Fogg. Uh, Josh Fogg, excuse me. Uh, Tyshawn. Tyshawn Fogg, excuse me. I'm thinking of the Pirates pitcher for some reason. Tyshawn Fogg. Um, I did it the other day too, didn't I, Fooch? I think at one point. Um, with Tyshawn, he just, he's another guy that at linebacker, you can see where future's bright with him. Yeah, we've been really high on Tyshawn. Unfortunately, he sits behind Trevor right now that uh, I think uh, just went over 100 tackles or close to going over 100 tackles for the third year in a row. And uh, Tyshawn's going to be a really good player. Um, he's talented. Um, he's a big, strong kid. And uh, he, kept, he keeps getting better with every opportunity out there. And I really like where he's at. And uh, him and Trevor are feeding off each other. Trevor's really helped him develop. And that's kind of the legacy Trevor's going to leave, that he's going to pass the baton over to uh, Tyshawn. And hopefully Tyshawn takes it and runs with it and uh, improves that position. We'll ask you about a couple of those seniors coming up in just a few moments. We'll take a break. Once again, get on the program. Our telephone number, 877-384-1869. Ask your question if you're here in person. We'll have one lined up in just a few moments from an old friend. But first, we'll take a quick time out from Quaker Steak and Lubin Edison. You're listening to The Chris Ash Show. Best tailgate? It's gotta be burgers. And a nice cold Coke. Real football. Y pollo asado. Hoops and wings. Dude, subs. Nah, hot dog. No, Dodger dog. I'll drink to that. Pass me a Coke. It's gotta be crawfish. Mac and cheese. No. Seven layer dip. Ribs. No contest. Hummus. Um, what? You need a hot grill and an ice cold Coke. Of course. Football and Coke. Come on. It's got to be Coke. Game day? Race day. Calls for Coke. You know it. It's tailgate 101. When we take care of our own hearts, we're also taking care of the people closest to us. So it's comforting to know that RWJ Barnabas Health has New Jersey's most comprehensive cardiac care program with access to top specialists, minimally invasive heart surgery options, and rehabilitation and wellness programs. So get your heart checked. It's as easy as visiting rwjbh.org slash heart. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. The Chris Ash Show returns after this local timeout. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lube. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2.50, and the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and bar open all year round. On the way to the game and need something to go? Give us a call, 732-777-WING. We cater events of any size. Watch all the games, have a great time, and enjoy the best wings in the USA. 561 Route 1 in Edison. 732-777-WING. This is Cabell Philpott, host of the Nissan College Football Blitz. Heard every Saturday from noon until midnight Eastern on TuneIn.com and the TuneIn app. When there's a big play, a momentum change, and that possible upset happening, not only will we let you know, you'll hear the scores as they happen live. Catch all of the action as we count you down to the college football playoff. It's the Nissan College Football Blitz. Saturdays, noon until midnight Eastern on the College Sports Now channel on TuneIn.com and the TuneIn app.
We have returned to the Chris S. Show here at Quaker Steak and Lube in Edison. Rutgers getting set for Penn State this coming Saturday. 877-384-1869. Also, you can ask your questions in person. And we have one lined up from a young man we visited with last week. What's your name? Remind us. And where are you from? Ryan from Edison. Hey, nice. Ryan. Nice tie. Best uh, dresser in here. That's Absolutely. right. Every week. <laughs> What's your question, Ryan? If you had to pick Hold on. Between a player that has size, talent, or heart, what would you pick? If he had size, size, talent, talent or, or heart. heart. I'm going to take heart. You know, if you got heart, uh, uh, it'll overcome uh, deficiencies in all those other areas. Uh, got to have uh, heart. You got a lot of heart? Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Keep it. Keep it. Ryan, it's always great to see you. Thank you. Uh, it's a great looking tie. You're right. There you go. Ron, you're going to meet us here next Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Ryan. We appreciate it as always. Um, a few other uh, things want to get to, Coach. Um, specifically, let's talk about some of your seniors uh, as they are going to be playing their final home games uh, this coming week. I'm just going to throw out a few of the names. And you just give me the first things that kind of pop into your head. Oh, I've got a game uh, here. About no? those guys. Oh, a little bit. A little bit. But the first one I'm going to mention is Trevor Morris because you talked to about him just a few moments ago. And for those that don't know, Trevor last week officially entered the top ten in all-time tackles uh, at Rutgers. He's over 300. He's only the 12th to ever do that. Uh, and, listen, he continues to put up numbers from that linebacker spot. When you think of Trevor Morris over the last three years that you've been with him, what do you think of? Pretty serious dude. Um, just uh, love the way he shows up every day and works. Uh, doesn't say a whole lot. Um, you know, keeps to himself. But uh, he's really de de developed. He's matured. Um, he's uh, taking care of his body. It, you know, the last couple of years, he's kind of been beat up at the end of the year. Probably right now, he's as good. he feels as good as he ever has because he's learned how to take care of his body. He's learned how to study the game. He understands offenses, our defense. So he's really improved. The guy right next to him, Deontay Roberts. Um, you know, I could say the same thing. And uh, Deontay right now is feeling probably as good as he ever has because he takes care of his body. Those two have been a great pair in the middle. I, I still remember our first uh, spring practice back in uh, 2016 had two linebackers in there that uh, had never played yet and um, really were undersized i remember walking off the field i'm like oh my god you know but uh to watch those two guys work um in the off season in the summer and during the season uh, to get to where they're at uh, today it's really been pretty impressive isaiah wharton you know it's a young man it's going to hopefully start uh, every game of the last four years and uh, that's hard to do I don't care what school you're at, what league you're in. That's very hard to do, and uh, he's done it. Uh, hopefully, we'll do it. You know, he's got uh, you know one more after this one. Uh, absolutely love him. He's worked himself. He's worked into uh, being a captain, a leader for our football team, and uh, just been Mr. Steady. Kevin Wilkins, um, really come a long way too. Um, uh, he's he's gotten big, strong. Uh, he's been through so much in his life, and to, to watch him use football to change his life and get a degree and hopefully open up uh, opportunities when Rutgers is over, that's what this is all about. And, uh, you know, football matters because it changes lives, and uh, it's going to change Kevin's. John Batticke. You know, John doesn't say anything, uh, <laughs> but John works as hard as anybody on our football team. And um, you always know what you're going to get from John every single day, and that's his best, and uh, love him for it. I'll give you one or two more. Saquon Hampton. You know, kind of like uh, Isaiah, you know, not necessarily going to start every game, but, you know, he's become a leader for our football team. People listen to him when he speaks. He works so hard, and uh, he's really improved and developed. I think the last couple games have been outstanding for him uh, against some really good uh, quality opponents, and uh, I'm excited to see where he goes from here. And uh, Giovanni Rachino. Yeah, uh, Gio, the, I guess the one word I can describe, use to describe Gio is selfless. Uh, he's all about the team. And, uh, you know, he wanted to be a starting quarterback here. And he's had his opportunities to play. Uh, he came, he chose to come back for his senior year. Uh, he was contemplating transferring and, and potentially going somewhere else. But he just loves Rutgers. He loves the team. Wanted to do everything he can to help move this program forward, whether he was playing or not. Uh, it didn't matter. 
you know, he wanted to help the football team, and he's done that. Coach? I'm a big fella from Long Beach, Tariq Cole. Yeah, Tariq is, uh, yeah, you know, same story as some of those other ones, just to watch the growth and development and maturity over the last uh, few years. Uh, it's been impressive. You know, when we got here, he, he was heavy. He was overweight <laughs> and, uh, you know, put together a plan uh, to try to get his body under control and uh, get where he needed to to be able to play and, and just to watch him dedicate himself to improving his body. That alone has been impressive because that's not easy to do. And it's one thing to put together a plan. It's another to watch the individual go out and work it, and that's exactly what he's done. Can we keep Saquon Hampton here a couple more games? He's playing his best football right now. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I hope he's not leaving anywhere. <laughs> nice. um, you know, I, I, I do want to mention a couple of the guys that – Folks probably haven't heard about because they're guys who are pra get their opportunities in practice. The scout team guys, the guys that don't get a lot of the glory, um, but they're vitally important to the development of your football team. And one guy that comes to mind here, Rob Natolo, a quarterback. Yeah, Rob came here as a grad transfer. Um, wanted to play quarterback at, at this level, and. Um, he adds value to our football team every single day because he shows up to work. Uh, he is down as the leader and captain, basically, of our scout team. And I know a lot of people think, you know, a scout team quarterback, big deal. But that's a very, very important position to get our defense ready. And because of the way he controls the scout team and handles his business, we have improved this year defensively because of what he does. Muhammad Wainwright is a guy that ended up getting some playing time a few weeks back and acquitted himself reasonably well. Yeah, you know, um, I'll be honest with you. I, I had no idea who Muhammad was, and uh, probably until after a week of training camp. And um, you know, I, I knew the kid, there's this name, but I didn't know much about him. And uh, I saw this uh, tall, you know, uh, good-looking guy running around, and I'm like, who is that? And he goes, Oh, that's the Wainwright kid. And I'm like, Wow, you know, he, he's going to have a chance to maybe do something here. And as he continued to work, and, and uh, unfortunately, some injuries happened. He was plugged in there. And he was always ready. It uh, didn't matter what the uh, situation was, what the role was. You know, he's played uh, our jack position. We put him at Sam. He didn't even know what Sam was. And we threw him out there in a the game because we had nobody else. And he gave us some reps. He's run down on kickoff. He's uh, done some, some good things for us. He's just an intelligent guy. He's a college graduate from Georgetown. And uh, he's going to be very successful in life. How about Coach, the pride of St. Peter's Prep? We've only had him for one year. But Jonathan Hillman, what he's added, his professionalism. Yeah, he's really helped those young players in the running back room develop, uh, teaching them how to practice, teaching them how to prepare, uh, taking pride in their performance. He's done a great job with those guys, and I know you, you guys can talk to Coach Camp uh, about him uh, more specifically when he's up here because he deals with them on a day-to-day -day basis. But I've really enjoyed having John uh, on our football team. All right, we have another question from a gentleman in attendance, and we know him well. Jim, how are you? Good Hello, friend, Chris. Jim. Hello, Coach. How are you? I'm doing great. Coach, a question. Uh, you have a program called Life Beyond the Game. Could you talk a little bit about that and another organization called the Rutgers Football Letter Winners and uh, how they're involved in your program? Yeah, uh, Life Beyond the Game is something we started a few years ago. Um, you know, football is so much bigger than, than wins and losses and bigger than us. And uh, for us, we want the players that come into our program to be set up for life uh, after football when it's over because it's going to end. And we feel it's our job to help them uh, find their passion, develop the skills necessary to go on and be successful, whether it be you know, in business, uh, in, in football, uh, in medicine, whatever it is. And uh, that's what the, 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 game, the uh, program is all about. We bring in guest speakers to speak to our team about different areas, um, uh, you know, different di uh, types of professions and things like that. Uh, we have a career day that we've set up in, in the city that we go to. Uh, we've done the last couple summers. Uh, we've got internships that we've set up uh, and these players have taken great advantage of. It's going to lead to employment for these guys. So it's um, really near and dear to my heart and uh, we all want to win. But I want to see these guys be successful. And, and uh, you talk about the true measure of a program. You know, the 10 years from uh, now when these, some of these players are done, what are they doing with their life? And if we can help them be successful, we need to do that. Um, what was the second part of the question? The Rutgers Football Ladder Winners Association. Yeah, um, you know, we, we welcome all uh, former players back into our program. Uh, I have had a lot, lot of them come speak to our team uh, during the season in the spring ball. Some of them have spoken in our Life Beyond the Game program. We're setting up a, uh, a mentorship or a big brother type of program with some former letter winners uh, that will we'll kick off here in the spring. Just uh, always trying to look at ways to connect 
who we are right now with the past and also help uh, develop our young players with guys that have been through here, gone through what they're going through and are successful right now and help them out. Thank you, Coach. Make my season and beat Penn State. <laughs> we'll talk about that matchup with Penn State as well in just a little bit. You know, Christopher, one of those guys that I was thinking about when Coach was talking about being successful was at the football game this last weekend, and that's Brian Leonard, and always great to see him come back and what he has meant to this Rutgers football program and very successful now in real estate. But you talk about his impact and, and the message he had to, for me, I interviewed him for this week, was he wants to see the kids like he did take a chance on Rutgers come here and make a difference, and he thinks it can happen. And I thought that was uplifting from him because he's done it before. Yeah, absolutely. We have another question and another familiar face. Hi, hey, Marie. Hi, how are you guys doing? Great. Okay, I have two questions. The first one is, um, will there be some significant playing time for some of the uh, leaving seniors, specifically Gio? And secondly, last week was not a good experience with the fact that so many tickets were bought by the opposition, and it's looking like this game may be even worse. Is the team prepared for the fact that we unfortunately may have a lot of Penn State fans there. I'll start with the uh, first question. You know, we have a game uh, this Saturday against a very good opponent, and uh, our job is to put together a game plan and put the people out there we feel give us the best opportunity to have success. And if in the game uh, there's an opportunity to put people uh, out there um, uh, to play, pay respect and tribute to, to their careers, we will uh, find an opportunity to do that. But our first uh, goal is to try to put together a plan to have success in the game and our seniors understand that uh, some of them are going to be playing some of them are not going to be playing but if we find an opportunity uh, based on how the game's going or situation we will do what we can to try to give them an opportunity to get on the field I feel like we owe that to them um, and there's no promises or guarantees but we will try to do that uh, the second thing is uh, our, myself our team our players we're only worried about what we can control you know uh, who buys tickets you know we we we, we can't necessarily control that. Uh, so we're going to go out and play uh, in our stadium with our home fans and, and celebrate our seniors on senior day. That's what we can control, and that's what we're going to do. No, I understand that. It's just a, the, the the matter is there are a lot of tickets available and are being scoffed up by the opposition, and this particular group is a lot more vocal than the Michigan fans. I've been through it enough times sitting in Section 126 surrounded by the opposition. Yeah. Marie, if it makes you feel any better, <laughs> I've been asked by about four or five Penn State people over the last two weeks, no. Not going to happen. <laughs> not happening. You're not getting my tickets, and you're not getting any tickets from me. Well, that's you want good tickets, to hear. That's your problem, not mine. Good to hear. All right. Thank you. Okay. Gotta be wearing scarlet to sit in our seats, that's for sure. 877-384-1869. That's 877-384-1869. What we'll do right now, we'll take a timeout, and we will come back, and we will talk about the running backs with Rutgers running backs coach Nunzio Campanelli. If I can, he and, this is going to be quite the bonding session with him and Fooch, I can tell you that. <laughs> I'm going to talk food. <laughs> that won't be a problem. So we'll talk to him next. Coach will rejoin us in just a bit. We'll preview more of that Penn State game. Stay with us. This is the Chris Ash Show. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lube. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day special starting at just 250, and the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and bar open all year round. On the way to the game and need something to go? Give us a call, 732-777-WING. We cater events of any size. Watch all the games, have a great time, and enjoy the best wings in the USA. 561 Route 1 in Edison. 732-777-WING. When we take care of our own hearts, we're also taking care of the people closest to us. So it's comforting to know that RWJ Barnabas Health has New Jersey's most comprehensive cardiac care program with access to top specialists, minimally invasive heart surgery options, and rehabilitation and wellness programs. So get your heart checked. It's as easy as visiting rwjbh.org slash heart. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. The Chris Ash Show returns after this local timeout. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Managing your health care can sometimes feel overwhelming. With the new Horizon Blue app from Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, 
You get the care and support you want right in your hands. Now you can have all of your health care coverage details and access to support at your fingertips. Get help scheduling appointments. Find doctors and specialists. Access your coverage details. Get updates on your claims. See easy to understand cost details and get support straight from the experts at Horizon. You can even see a doctor wherever it's most convenient for you via your smartphone or tablet. Downloading the app is easy and free. Text get app to 422-271 today or find it in the App Store or Google Play. There is no charge to download the Horizon Blue app, but rates from your wireless provider may apply. The Horizon Blue app. It's not just an app. It's your direct connection to care. All right, we have returned to Quaker Steak and Lube here in Edison on the Chris Ash Show, live on 1450 AM WCTC, New Brunswick, and on our vision on scarletknights.com, also on Facebook Live as well. Chris Carlin, Anthony Fusilli in for Eric this week, and we are joined by Rutgers running backs coach, Nunzio Campanelli. Coach, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. We got you, we'll get you right up close to the mic there. We appreciate you coming by. Um, First off, your first year here uh, at Rutgers uh, in college football after being the head coach the last several years uh, at Bergen Catholic, what's the transition been like for you? Uh, it's been a lot of fun, you know. I mean, I, I've learned a lot. I've met a lot of great people. Uh, it, it's been a – everything about it's been a great experience so far. You know, Christopher, for the first time I saw Nunzio, he's running around. He's a little bigger than maybe Chris Ash's son. <laughs> and he was on the football field there at Paramus Catholic and – your father, a legendary coach in North Jersey, what kind of influence was he on you, especially offensively? I mean, at an early age, you were running around throwing a football over the place. Yeah, he's been a huge influence on, you know, I mean, obviously, I guess your father's probably one of the biggest influences you'll ever have. But uh, as a football coach, he was a tremendous influence on me. One, I mean, he, there was no risk he wasn't willing to take, and he was kind of ahead of his time as far as a lot of the things he liked to do. He was out throwing the ball, run and shoot stuff, and you know, 20-something years ago, so... Uh, it definitely made a huge mark on me, and I think it helped me a lot when I got into coaching. I, I kind of had a little bit of a jump on the pass game and some of those things that you know, most people didn't have experience with. Yeah, you had an awful lot of success at Bergen Catholic. So what made this the right situation for you to make the jump? Well, you know, I, I got to know Coach pretty well, I think, over the last you know, two-plus years, and I, I felt really strongly about what he's doing. And you know, I, I don't think anyone could be more of a New Jersey guy than me. I, you know, I've always... Uh, felt a, a great affiliation of Rutgers. My brother played here and coached here, and you know I, I've obviously always been a fan. And it just seemed like a great time. I, I think that you know there's a lot of positive things happening. I think we have an opportunity to really have a great program in the coming years, and it, it just seemed like a great time. It, it seemed like a good fit. Ironically enough, you coached against Jonathan Hillman. Now you coach Jonathan Hillman. What's that been like? Uh, honestly, there's uh, he's been awesome. I mean, there's quite a few guys on the team that I coached against, but uh, you know working with him. Uh, specifically, it's been great. His senior year, he beat us on a screen with like, I don't know, about 90 seconds left to go in the game. It was a tie game. He took it like 70 yards for a touchdown. So I'm not really over that yet. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, the, the, really, he's been great. He's a great kid. He's a. Uh, He's a great leader. It's his birthday today. That's good, you know, good Happy stuff. Happy birthday, but, John. Yeah, yeah, but he he's been really like you know, coach mentioned it, but really just a great influence on uh, Raheem and Isaiah and really everybody in the room. He really is just he knows how to work. He's a true pro. I think is really kind of the word you use. And it's right on. He really is. He's a pro. He's a great he's a great player. But you know, on top of that, he he's a great leader. Yeah. What has it meant to bring him here as a graduate transfer? For you, is it almost like a, a, an additional student coach, so to speak, to help out in that room? Uh, absolutely, because you know he understands the game. He, you know, you can have conversations with him from an experience standpoint that, you know, he could shed some light on some of the things you're saying. He, he can make it come to life because he's been through it. He's he's played in you know almost 50 college football games, so you know he he has a ton of experience, and he's the type of guy that, you know, you can trust to. to you know, give the other guys great advice, and you know, it, there's, it's been nothing but positive. What's it like for you now that you walk into some of these high schools, and you already know the head coaches, and they, you have a relationship with all of them, and now you're coming in recruiting, trying to get their players. What has that been like um, now that you've gotten to know them on a different side? Honestly, it's been really positive. Everybody's been awesome. I mean, a lot of these guys I've known for 
20 and you know even 30 years so I, I've kind of known a lot of them my whole life some of them I coached against some of them I played against uh, some of them were coaching when I was playing you know but uh, I, I everybody's been great you know I, I think that so many people in this state want to see Rutgers be successful and I think a lot of those guys really want to help us you know as you know as we go through it and you know we keep going in and recruiting their players I think it's just going to you know keep developing relationships I think relationships are really important in recruiting and you know knowing some of these guys for this long and knowing them that well uh, I think will be uh, an advantage. Rutgers running backs coach Nunzio Campanelli with us. Let's talk about some of the individual guys in the room. Uh, you mentioned Raheem Blackshear. Now, he's a guy that has shown an awful lot of versatility. People a couple of weeks ago after the big game uh, catching the football were talking about, well, maybe he should be a slot guy uh, full-time. Tell us about Raheem and kind of the, the influence uh, that he has, where you have seen his biggest development. Well, I think he's developed in a lot of ways, but the one thing that's tremendous about him is he's a completely unselfish guy. He'll do anything he can to help the team. So if we need to put him in the slot, we need to put him outside, we need to put him in the backfield, we use him in pass protection, we use him as a decoy. We've used him in so many different roles, and he's willing to learn it all. He works really hard at it. He takes tremendous pride in his work. Uh, you know, he, he, has a, he had probably has more to know than anyone in the offense other than maybe Art, and you know, he's handled it tremendously. And he's made, you know, he's made plays all over the place as our leading rusher and our leading receiver. I mean, that's I, I don't know how many guys in college football are, are doing that. I think he may be the only one. And that, he really is just there's nothing he won't do to try and help us win. And on top of it, he's just an awesome competitor. When you look at a running back who comes to play for Nunzio, what do you expect from him? What are you asking from him? Well, um, you know, one, they got to be tough. They got to be hardworking. They have to be unselfish. I, you know, I think that's those are three things that every one of the guys in, in our room have been. You know, they've really just committed to whatever it can be to help the team, and I, I think that that's awesome. I, I because I think that has allowed us to use multiple backs at once on the field. We've you know, uh, you know, Jonathan Hillman's role has changed at times over the course of the year. He's you know never batted an eye at it as Isaiah's developed and learned more and you know feels more comfortable. You know, those guys are totally willing to share, you know, the carries to do whatever it takes to give us the best chance to win. And so those are the things that, I, you know, probably looking for on top of the, you know, the physical traits. But it's really more those other things, you know, I, how much, you know, you're willing to do day in and day out to try and help the team prepare to win. Even some of the guys that maybe aren't playing as much. I mean, Trey Sneed had an opportunity in the Northwestern game and, you know, he was really prepared. He did an awesome job. And I thought that was you know, a real testament to, you know, his character and work ethic and, you know, what we've got going on in the room. Uh, you know, with that in mind, um, Trey's a guy that, you know, when he's had those chances, like you said, he's been prepared, but those chances probably haven't been as great as he would want them to be so far because it has been a pretty good room the last couple of years. How has he handled that? He's handled it like a pro. I mean, he, he has a great attitude. He comes to work every day. Uh, you know, he's a really mature kid. He's a really intelligent kid. And, you know, he's been a great special teams player for us. Uh, you know, we, so he, you know, goes out and tries to find a role and find a way to impact a team in a positive way. And I think that's all you can ask of your players. I mean, it's, you know, it's Big Ten football. It's, it's highly competitive. You know, there's a lot of great players out there. And, and so they, they all have to know there's going to be competition week in and week out. And, you know, the truth is when your opportunity comes, you know, you mentioned Zach Vineski before. I mean, his opportunity came. He came out and, you know, he's – really played really well for us and I think that shows everybody that you never know when your opportunity's coming and Trey did that in the Northwestern game went out and had a you know I think like three or four catches in the first half did a great job in pass protection got us off the goal line on the first drive so you know I think that those things are you know really what make a team you're an emotional guy you're a guy who you know has a lot of passion for football when you see one of your young players zigzagging up and down the field for 80 yards, what was going through your mind at the time? I think I was running my best, like, uh, six flat 40 up the sideline behind <laughs> him. But, uh, you know, he really, uh, that, you know, it was, it, that's exciting. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't think it's really my role to be, you know, hooting and hollering that much on the sideline, uh, you know, as probably I was when I was a, a head coach or, or something like that. But, uh, you know, in those moments, I think, you know, you, how could you not be excited and emotional about it? It really was, uh, you know, it was, it was a pretty awesome play. Whereas Isaiah really just started to break through, we've seen him over the last few weeks when he's gotten the opportunity to touch the football uh, you really see that uh, I remember John McNulty at the beginning of the year describing him as a player that plays like his hair's on fire. 
He absolutely does. And, you know, what he's learn, learning to do is, he's, you know, he's learning to play a little bit more under control. And, you know, he's kind of being able to fit it up and hit it where it needs to be more often. Uh, you know, he's so fired up and so excited all the time that he occasionally makes mistakes just because he's so passionate about it. And the more it slows down for him, the better he's going to be. And I think that, you know, we're really just trying hard to make sure we don't give him too much so that he's always continually growing and getting better. And uh, as I said, you know, the, the guys around him have been, they've been great with him. I mean, they see that he's got great talent and they want to see him be successful, uh, which is, you know, it's a testament to Raheem and John and, you know, Trey and all those guys, Chuck. So, uh, but he, he is, he's only scratching the surface of what he's capable of doing. I think he's got a chance to really be, you know, an outstanding player type of guy that you could put a ton of carries on his back and, he, and he's going to produce. The thing that has to be exciting for you is that you had Raheem on the other side on that big run and the attention that he garnered because of what he had did in the past allowed Pacheco to run free all the way down. And that has to be exciting as a coach to see that their, their, their talents are now helping you. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what I'm saying is that, you know, they totally understand that the, the, as they all work together, you know, it just creates more opportunities. All three of them were on the field on that play. You know, John kind of stepped in as a fullback on that play, and Raheem, you know, did a great job of drawing the attention. I mean, the kid Winovich is probably one of the best players in the country, and, you know, Raheem pulled him out of there on the fake reverse, and, you know, we were able to, you know, pop the run, and Isaiah finished it. And, you know, that's exactly what you're looking for. You're looking for, you know, guys that are going out and playing hard for each other. Rutgers running backs coach Nunzio Campanelli with us here at Quaker Steak and Lube on the Chris Ash Show this week. Uh, you know, they, they say this about young running backs in the NFL, and I think it's pretty similar uh, in college that one of the big things that they need to do better to get on the field when they're younger is pass protection. What are the elements of pass protection that younger guys struggle with, have to get better at early? It's a number of things. I mean, first of all, the technique. You know, most of them don't do it in high school. Isaiah especially didn't do it because he was a quarterback yeah. in high school. So, I mean, he really has never – you know, until he walked on our campus, had never blocked anyone probably in his life. And so there's the technique part of it, which is important because you're taking on some, you know, pretty impressive athletes, guys that are, you know, maybe bigger and stronger than he is. And then on top of it, you know, we're asking him to pick up protections. Uh, they're all different, you know, and we probably have about, you know, at least 15 of them, you know, when it all comes together. So we're asking him to do so many different things. So learning to understand, you know, how the secondary rotation affects where the guys are going to come from and how he needs to fit it up, you know, it's a lot to ask. And he just does a great job at every week. He comes in on his own, does extra work to make sure that he's prepared for it. And, you know, he, he, he's so into, like, the tests and the things that you give him. He really just wants to get it right. And he also understands that it's a, you know, it's a learning process and that, you know, when he goes in there, he can't hurt the team. So he works really hard at making sure he's prepared for it. What's that relationship for you like a first-year coach, first-year offensive coordinator with John McNulty, and now starting to figure out, you know, what he's all about and he knows about now what you're all, all about? Uh, honestly, you know, that's probably one of the more fun parts about it is, you know, developing the relationships with the coaches. I, I knew John uh, when he was here the first time because he was coaching Mike Teal and I had been Mike's high school, you know, quarterback coach and offensive coordinator. So uh, I had – Watched him a lot. I used to come down at almost every spring practice. I would come down a lot, and you know, so. But getting to work with him every day has been different. And you know, I, I, he's a great coach. He's a really intelligent guy. Uh, he sees everything. Uh, you know, it, it's it it's amazing how much he comes back with. You know, just from you know watching it, you're you know, he's, it's pretty impressive. And you know, he knows what he wants to do. It's just a matter of figuring out you know what works for our players and developing a lot of young players. You know, not putting too much on their plate. And uh, it, it's it. That's probably one of the more fun parts of it is just continually trying to figure out what we can do to give our guys the best chance to be successful. Foots touched on the recruiting aspect of it earlier. When you were a high school coach and you would have coaches coming in recruiting your guys, what were the things that you looked for in those coaches when you're trying to get a feel for what might be the right fit? Uh, probably the biggest thing is, you know, are they trustworthy guys? I, you know, I was always a believer that my job as a high school coach was to create opportunities for our players and make sure that they were going to places that could be good fits. You know, I, I've always felt that, you know, I never really thought it was our job to tell them where to go, but at times it might have been our job to tell them where not to go because you, if, if you didn't think somebody was going to take care of them, they needed to know that. I think that that's a really important part of it. So the, the longer you know people, the more uh, they deal with you and, you know, 
year in, year out basis, the better they understand, you know, you know the better we could understand, hey, this guy's going to treat you the right way. And I think that that's really important. Trust is really what it comes down to, you know, feeling really good about people. So I take it on the flip side now, that's the most important thing for you to do is to establish a trust in the relationships with these coaches. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, you, you know, you have to be, you know, one, you got to communicate. You got to make sure that, you know, they're informed and, you know, I think that you're honest with them all the time. And, you know, uh, you know, I think coach, I actually was at the meeting, coach spoke to the, the uh, New Jersey coaches like in his first week on the job. And he, he had mentioned the idea, so, you know, we may not always agree uh, or something to that effect, but, you know, as long as we communicate, and I think that's really true. I think that, uh, you know, as long as there's always an open line of communication, there's a lot of kids out there and it's about getting the right fits and what, you know, what our needs are, you know, what that kid's able to do. So I think when the coaches communicate, it's always helpful. What's it like now when you sit down with the parents and, you know, you tell them that Rutgers is a, is a, it's a terrific place to get an education. And, and a lot of times the kids are thinking about football, but the parents are thinking about the education. Yeah, well, I, I think that the resources that we have available for kids and, you know, the proximity to New York City, you know, there, there's so many opportunities at Rutgers and there's so much opportunity in this area. And, you know, I don't feel, I feel like nobody knows that better than I do. You know, I spent my whole life here. So, you know, that's, I think, to me, the biggest thing, you know, and we, we talk about it a lot. Like most of these guys that are from the region, they're coming back to live here, you know, when college is over. So the resources of the alumni base, that's, you know, I mean, who could have a bigger alumni base in this area than we do? Nobody. You know, it's, a, you know, it's, it's as simple a, a deal as possible. And, you know, the avenues that are open to them are huge. So it's just a matter of making people realize that the things that you can accomplish when you finish, you know, if you have a great career and you take care of the academics, what the opportunities for you in the future are, you know, they're endless. Is that your biggest selling point to these kids? Yeah, it's really important to me because, you know, I, I coached in – three Catholic schools where, you know, you kind of look at private schools. Most of those kids, you know, the education part is very important to them. And I always thought – I had a kid come to Rutgers. John Simmons was a great player for us. He turned down a number of Ivy League schools on top of other, you know, uh, uh, Division One schools. And, and I, I always thought that he was able to see there's a lot of opportunity here if I go out and take care of business. And he was a great student. Uh, he was. I thought he was a great player. You know, unfortunately, got banged up a little bit at the end of his career. But, you know, he, he had a great start to his career and and really was a great player. He's one of the better players I ever coached. And, you know, he was able to take advantage of it all. He was able to take care of the academics, and you know, now he's doing great for himself. And he'll have a tremendous career in everything he does. And I, but him and his parents were able to recognize, like, I want to play big time football, and I also want a great education. And you can you can do that here. You know. All you got to do is, you know, really, if you just look into it and research it, you'll find out. So it's our job to kind of do that work for them and let them know that those opportunities are there that you could get at, you know, those private colleges and stuff like that that people think. You know, th those same opportunities are right here at Rutgers, and it's just a matter of, you know, educating people on it. Well, listen, Nunzio, we appreciate you coming by. You know, Fooch wanted to talk food the entire time <laughs> with you. You want to get? You got anything you want to get in? What's the go-to uh, meal? In, in, in when you're going over, you know, the family gets together. What's the go-to? Is it chicken parm? What is it? Oh, it's definitely going to be some sort of spaghetti and meatball. Something like really love it. Yeah, it. it you know, uh, forget it. Dinner at my parents' house could take six hours. So, <laughs> you know, love it. <laughs> well, listen, Nunzio, we appreciate you coming by. Best of luck the rest of this season, and uh, hope you've enjoyed year one at Rutgers. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Rutgers running backs coach Nunzio Campanelli with us. We'll come back. The head coach will rejoin us, and we will preview the matchup with Penn State when we return to Quaker Steak and Lube here in Edison. This is the Chris Ash Show. Managing your health care can sometimes feel overwhelming. With the new Horizon Blue app from Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, you get the care and support you want right in your hands. Now you can have all of your health care coverage details and access to support at your fingertips. Get help scheduling appointments, find doctors and specialists, access your coverage details, get updates on your claims, see easy to understand cost details, and get support straight from the experts at Horizon. You can even see a doctor wherever it's most convenient for you via your smartphone or tablet. Downloading the app is easy and free. Text get app to 422-271 today or find it in the App Store or Google Play. There is no charge to download the Horizon Blue app, but rates from your wireless provider may apply. 
the Horizon Blue app. It's not just an app, it's your direct connection to care. The Chris Ash Show returns after this local timeout. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lube. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2.50, and the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and bar open all year round. On the way to the game and need something to go? Give us a call, 732-777-WING. We cater events of any size. Watch all the games, have a great time, and enjoy the best wings in the USA. 561 Route 1 in Edison. 732-777-WING. Best tailgate? It's got to be burgers. And an ice cold Coke. Real football. Y pollo asado. Hoops and wings. It sucks. Nah, hot dog. No, Dodger dog. I'll drink to that. Pass me a Coke. It's got to be crawfish. Mac and cheese. No, seven layer dip. Ribs. No contest. Hummus. Um, what? You need a hot grill and an ice cold Coke. Of course. Football and Coke. Come on. It's got to be Coke. Game day? Race day. Calls for Coke. You know it. It's tailgate 101. We have returned for the Chris Ash Show here at Quaker Stick and Louvre in Edison. A couple of more minutes uh, with the coach. Let's talk a little bit about Penn State. Uh, I'm sure that you're not all that broken up that Saquon Barkley is now playing up the road for the Giants, and you won't have to face him this week. But uh, Penn State, we know, very good football team. They're 7-3 and three on the year, and uh, they have a, a veteran quarterback in Trace McSorley. Yeah, they're a very good football team. Uh, you know, they've... Uh, McSorley's, you know, a great competitor. Um, he's been a lot of fun uh, to watch, not necessarily play against, but to watch um, him play in other games. Uh, I just respect good players and good football, and, and uh, that's what he is. And uh, he's got uh, other good players around him. So Penn State's been good for a long, long time, and, um, you know, this year's no different. What is it like for you, Coach, to see some of the players, the young guys, to get better? And they're, they're, they're playing hard for you, and, but they're just a little maybe lacking in experience seems like the mistakes are getting a little less and less as the season is going on. Yeah, we're, we're playing cleaner football. I talked to the team about that. You know, one of the reasons that we're closer and closer um, in more competitive games because it's cleaner football. Uh, there's fewer penalties, fewer turnovers, fewer mental errors. And that all happens with reps. You know, how does a young guy get better? You know, one, it's his attitude. Is he coachable? Um, does he show up every single day and just work? And then does he get enough reps? To get good at something, it takes a 1,000 reps. And uh, unfortunately, we don't, uh, we're not able to get him 1,000 reps until you know, we go through a season or, or a, a, another spring and training camp, and then it starts to click. And, but for some of them that have been playing, it's starting to click. Can you point to one or two guys that really have taken big steps forward of your younger guys as the season has gone along because of those reps? Well, one is Isaiah. You know, we've yep. been talking about uh, Isaiah. Avery Young is another one uh, that's really uh, taken off. Uh, I think Travis Vokalek is a young player that keeps getting better. Uh, Davon Robinson's a young player that gets better. Art is getting better, you know, with more and more reps. So, you know, all of them that are playing, and it's really not just the true freshmen, it's the redshirt freshmen yep. that haven't played. And uh, even then some of the second-year players that maybe didn't play a lot last year. Blackshear played last year. He's still a young player, and he keeps getting better because of more reps. Coach, give me a guy that maybe we don't see on the field right now. This is our last show that really excites you for next year, maybe maybe even in, you know, in the wide receiver position or somewhere like that? Uh, you know, I've been asked that several times. And uh, since you mentioned wide receiver, you know, th those guys are all young. And uh, they're working really hard to try to get better. It's going to take a, a ton of reps for them to uh, get where we all want them to be. Uh, but I am, I am excited about some of the younger uh, freshman receivers that are being redshirted, Zaire Lacewell. Uh, Jalen Jordan, Paul Woods, I think those guys will all be contributors next year in that room. Very excited uh, about them. I think a couple of the offensive linemen, Raquan O'Neal and Reggie Sutton, you've seen uh, it tight in there. Those guys are going to be good, young you know, football players uh, on the offensive line. And then some of our young defensive linemen that are redshirted have really improved in practice. All right, we'll take one more quick timeout. Right now, though, time for our upcoming Scarlet Knights athletic events schedule for you. Presented by MGM Resorts. we got a lot of ra action at the rack this weekend. Rutgers men's basketball taking on St. John's this Friday at 7 p.m. We hope to see you there. 
A big thanks to MGM Resorts for sponsoring our upcoming events. As a proud partner of Rutgers Athletics, MGM Resorts invites you to see John Legend perform at the Event Center on November 23rd. Visit theborgata.com to see all the entertainment experiences MGM Resorts has to offer. Christopher, well, can I? Can we got to take one quick time out. What do you got? I just want to congratulate C. Vivian. Oh, we yeah, go. we're getting to that, too. Okay, good. All we right. will talk about that because right. Coach was there in just a moment. Stay with us. This is the Chris Ash Show. Traffic. It can be more stressful than that last second Hail Mary pass. But Nissan changed the game. Nissan Rogue has available Nissan Intelligent Mobility, like ProPilot Assist, that can start and stop in highway traffic all on its own and help keep you centered. Nissan Rogue. It's a game changer. Get to Nissan. Proud partner of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. ProPilot Assist is an available feature and cannot prevent collisions. Always monitor traffic conditions. Keep both hands on the steering wheel. See owner's manual for safety information. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lou. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2.50, and the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and bar open all year round. On the way to the game and need something to go? Give us a call, 732-777-WING. We cater events of any size. Watch all the games, have a great time, and enjoy the Best Wings in the USA. 561 Route 1 in Edison. 732-777-WING. The Chris Ash Show returns after this local timeout. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Managing your health care can sometimes feel overwhelming. With the new Horizon Blue app from Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, you get the care and support you want right in your hands. Now you can have all of your health care coverage details and access to support at your fingertips. Get help scheduling appointments. Find doctors and specialists. Access your coverage details. Get updates on your claims. See easy-to-understand cost details and get support straight from the experts at Horizon. You can even see a doctor wherever it's most convenient for you via your smartphone or tablet. Downloading the app is easy and free. Text get app to 422-271 today or find it in the App Store or Google Play. There is no charge to download the Horizon Blue app, but rates from your wireless provider may apply. The Horizon Blue app, it's not just an app, it's your direct connection to care. Back on the Chris Ash Show, and we do have to say congratulations to C. Vivian Stringer. Career win number 1,000 last night. You were there, and boy, that was a terrific night at the Rack. Great event. Uh, just so happy for her. And, and uh, when you think about 1,000 wins, man, it's mm. wow. You know, in this profession, it's really hard to win, um, whether it's basketball, football, men's. It doesn't matter. In uh, college sports at this level in the Big Ten, it is really, really hard to win. And for her to get 1,000, it's such an honor. Uh, it's such a tremendous event last night. There were a lot of great people there. And just to see the joy of that uh, team to be able to get that for her, it was something special. And I know you're very much looking forward to Saturday for your seniors getting their last chance to play a home game. A absolutely. Uh, that's what the game is about. We, we really hope the fans will show up and support these guys and send them out on a positive note. They've gone through a lot here. They've uh, invested a ton in this program, this university, and I really hope people will show up and support them. Saturday, it's Rutgers and Penn State, 12 noon. Coach, thanks for being so generous with your time all year long. Thank you. I just want to thank the fans, too, that show up here every single Wednesday. Really appreciate it. Uh, we'll, we'll be celebrating a lot of wins down the road on Wednesday, so I really appreciate you guys through the good and the bad. Our crowd has been fantastic all year long. Casey and everybody here at Quaker Steak and Loop has taken care of us all year long. It's been our pleasure. We want to thank Colin Osborne, Mark Sell from Our Vision, Bradley Darahilo, Haseem Phillips, Jimmy Gill from Rutgers Sports Information, and our producer engineer, Paul Schrager, as well as John Essek back in our Rutgers IMG Sports Network studios. For Fooch, Eric Legrand, and the coach, Chris Ash. This is Chris Carlin speaking. Thanks so much for joining us all season long on the Chris Ash Show. We'll see you Saturday at highpoint.com stadium as Rutgers takes on Penn State. Have a good week, everybody. <laughs> 
You've been listening to The Chris Ash Show on the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Join us throughout the season from Quaker Steak and Lube on US1 in Edison to hear from the head football coach of the Scarlet Knights. The Chris Ash Show has been brought to you by... The Chris Ash Show is an exclusive presentation of IMG, America's home for college sports.